One of my favorite things to do personally is go out to nature trails, hiking trails, and biking trails, and just go see the nature and go meditate and such. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode, and welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true nature trail horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to send it in at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. Now, without further ado, let us get right into these creepy and allegedly true nature trail horror stories that'll keep you out of the woods today. It was back in the 1980s. At the time, I was in my late 20s and I would often grab my collie, Lacey, and drive my Mustang convertible to the park not too far from our home to go hiking. Although I was a single female, I always felt safe hiking in that park. It was like my second backyard. It was a hot Sunday morning in July. There was a slight breeze and a beautiful blue sky. It was pretty early, around 8.30 a.m., and the park was deserted when we pulled up into the parking area. The parking lot was near the picnic area and restrooms, and it would get crowded later in the day when the families arrived for their picnics, and the fishermen would make their way out to the lake and try their luck at catching that elusive big one. This park covers 1,900 acres of land, and has miles of wooded dirt trails that intersect each other. There are a few main trails that pass by a lake, and meander along a lazy river, and lead to three hidden, breathtaking waterfalls. It is heavily forested, and in the summer, when the leaves are all on board, the trail's visibility is limited to the path. I loved that park, hiked it often, and knew the trails like the back of my hand, and enjoyed having it to myself. I intentionally chose times when I knew it would be less crowded. The lot I parked in is across a little road from the head of my trail. It's my favorite trail. As I called Lacey out of the car and snapped on her leash, another car pulled into the lot. He parked rather close to me, and I found it rather annoying and a bit strange. I go there for solitude and peace, and there were plenty of other parking spots, and there was no need to crowd me. The trail Lacey and I wanted to hike on was across the road, so I headed that way. We started up the hill and onto a heavily wooded hiking trail. For some reason... I was feeling a sense of dread and glanced at the man as he was getting out of his car. I am somewhat suspicious when hiking alone and immediately found him a bit off. Something about him was setting off alarm bells in my head. He appeared to be in his 40s and was by himself, which is not unusual. A lot of people hiked by themselves. It was his attire and demeanor that caught me off guard. He was dressed like no other hiker I have ever seen. He had on dress pants and shiny black dress shoes, like the ones my dad would always wear going to church. The clothes and shoes were a bit shabby, but still not something somebody would wear when hiking. None of the trails in this park were paved. They were all dirt and often muddy since they crossed meandering streams. But it was his expression that struck me the most. He was staring intently at Lacey and I, with no expression on his face, and it was making me extremely uncomfortable. I thought to myself, who does that, and who wears dress shoes hiking? I began to think, and I became more uneasy. There was just something creepy about him. Most people who hike the trails keep to themselves, but will say a brief hi, how you doing, or wave, something like that. This man simply stared intently at Lacey and I with no expression in his blank eyes. I knew somewhere deep down inside of me that it would be the best plan of action to avoid him entirely. It was a little voice in my head that I had to listen to. I considered giving up my hiking altogether that day, but I'd been looking forward to it and Lacey was raring to go, and maybe I was just being paranoid. So I turned back around and began walking up the main hiking trail. I decided to verge off one of the many little paths that branched off the main trail. 
I chose this trail as it was not marked with any signage and did not go towards the falls of the river, but winded through the dense, heavily forested woods. It was not as popular as the other trails, and I figured I could avoid the man as he probably would choose one of the more popular marked trails that most hikers would. As Lacey and I walked along, I glanced around to see if I could still see him. To my dread, I realized that he had also chosen the trail we were hiking. I looked around to see if there were any other hikers out, but it was just him, myself, and Lacey. I was not concerned to the point of panic, but still somewhat freaked out. It was just himself, myself, and Lacey. I was not concerned to the point of panic, but still freaked out. I decided it was best to continue to steer clear of him, and as soon as I was able, I took a different cross trail to avoid him. The trail I chose headed off in an entirely different direction from the way he was headed. I kept walking at a fast pace, trying to put as much distance between me and him as possible. I tried to enjoy the gorgeous, beautiful day, but I could not shake the feelings of unease and all the while walking tried to stay diligent of the man's location. After hiking for about five minutes, I began to feel my sense of unease increasing. I turned back to notice that the same figure, once again, was following us in the distance, gaining on us slowly but steadily. He had taken the same intersecting trail as Lacey and I and was following behind us again. He did not appear to be enjoying the walk. He was not looking at the nature around him, just staring right at Lacey and me. He continued to stalk us at a quick pace with a sense of purpose into his stride. His face was motionless, his eyes never leaving us. As I glanced to him, it seemed waves of malice were emanating from him, and I was more scared than I had ever been in my life. By this time, Lacey was beginning to feel my anxiety. She was a beautiful dog and looked a lot like Lassie. She was a good 65 pounds and unlike most collies, did not care for strangers or anything else out of the ordinary. She was also beginning to pick up on my emotions and starting to perceive this danger. She began stopping and turning, looking back at him perceiving this person as a threat. I knew all of these trails like the back of my hand and was quite sure we could lose him. I crossed into another trail, and I thought surely we had gotten far enough ahead of him that he would be unable to determine which trail we had walked. Glancing nervously behind me, but much to my horror, when I looked up the trail ahead, I saw him walking straight towards us at a determined pace. He had somehow found the trail that circles around us and then crossed over to head us off. This could be no accident. It was obvious to me now that he was intentionally following us. But why? My brain went into overdrive. All of my senses were telling me that I was not in a good situation. I wondered what I could do. I had a very, very bad feeling about this man and had to find an escape route and get back to the safety of my car as quickly as I could. I hastily looked around for another trail that I could take before he would reach us. There was nothing quickly thought it through, and determined that my only options were to turn and run back to the opposite direction, dash into the heavily forested woods, or walk right past him. I looked at him, judged the distance, and knew if I ran, even with his street clothes on, he could possibly catch me on the trail. I had no desire to run off into the woods as the grounds are heavily covered with tripping hazards, and I've watched enough horror movies to know that the running victim always trips and falls out of panic. I contemplated all of those options, and you are probably going to think I'm crazy, but I decided the best course of action was to keep walking straight ahead and walk past him. I was not alone. I had Lacey, and she gave me the courage to confront the alarming, disconcerting stranger. As we walked closer to him, he said nothing but kept staring at us intently with his blank, emotionless expression. His eyes were very dark and menacing. I walked nervously towards him, and as we got closer and closer to him, I began talking to Lacey under my breath, urging her on with a desperate voice pleading over and over, Get him! Get him! Lacey felt my fear. She felt it to her very core and fed off of it. She began growling low in her throat. The closer he got to us, the louder and more profound the rumbling from within her became. By the time we passed him, I was physically holding her off by her leash. She was lunging at him, snarling and baring her teeth. He did not react like someone being threatened aggressively by a dog. There was no resentment, no irritation. Strangely, he said nothing to me, and I said nothing to him. He passed by us and gave Lacey a wide berth, 
no longer looking at us or showing any interest at all. I lightly said, That's not nice, Lacey. I was petting her and encouraging her to growl at him the entire time, though. She continued to give him the Clint Eastwood stare and kept barking until he was well past us. I kept an eye on him, ensuring he did not back away or turn back towards us. I was eventually relieved to see that he made his way to a trail that led to the parking lot. I got in his car and drove away. I continued my hike heading to a different side of the park. I kept thinking about the man and wondering what he had been doing. To this day, I think Lacey saved me from an awful situation. And when we returned home that day, I made sure she got an extra special treat. Hello, Swamp Dweller. I have been listening to your show for quite a while now. I want to tell you how I have seen a skimwalker and got away. First, let me give you some background. To protect my identity, I would not disclose my proper name, so call me S. I am a 25-year-old male in Berks County, Pennsylvania. The events transpired at the Monocacy Creek Trail inside Douglasville, Pennsylvania. One day, I decided I was going to go hiking and probably camp out for a while when darkness flooded the woods. I never really had many experiences that made it not okay to be here. I walked this trail from noon to almost dusk because I love nature. So, as everything was, it was peaceful, calm, serene, up until about the evening, sometime around 6.30pm. Although, as expected, my feelings of dread and being watched were strong. There was also the stink of hot garbage, and a skunk had a baby. I immediately noticed that I heard nothing. I am a firm believer in going with your gut. Of course, now, there are possibility of bears or predators in the area scrounging around for food but I stayed as alert as best as I could. As expected, I was plunged in utter darkness. There wasn't a moon out now. It was a new moon. I had a flashlight, but there was this feeling that if I turned it on, I would see this thing just standing there. I felt like this thing was evil, nothing but hatred standing before me nearby. I knew this trail inside and out in my mind. I lit a blaze of courage. I have till this day. I have no idea where it came from. I took off my socks and my shoes. I ducked down and slowly moved at a snail's pace. I didn't make much sound as I felt the ground below me. It took everything in me to try my best not to fumble around and to get away from whatever this thing was. Slowly but surely, the feeling of being watched went away. So I turned on my flashlight to locate where I was, just for a second. I am almost at the trail. I am doing my best to make it there. I turned off my flashlight, and at a breakneck speed, running like a flash, I jetted out of this place. But, out of nowhere, I heard something that shocked me and made me trip out of focus, lost, and how close this thing was without me knowing it. What scared me the most, and made me trip, was I heard a voice say, You are like one of us, in this demonic, but human-like tone. But I knew it wasn't a human. But, for whatever reason, I flipped on my flashlight and saw what looked like this nine-foot-tall creature. It had its flesh nearly rotting off. The smell of it was unbearably intense. The teeth were almost red, smiling at me as if it were trying to be friendly. But I saw them, these sharp, jagged, menacing teeth. I don't know where this thing came from. Still, this incredible strength from within me told me to pick up a stick that was on the ground and try to swing it at this thing. I didn't know what to do at this point, so I picked it up, stood up, and speared the thing with it. Within seconds, I picked out my lighter, I forgot that I had it in my pocket, and put it close to this thing on the stick trying to burn it. Standing there, lighting this thing on fire, it screamed a sound so horrific, I thought I would faint just from being there, smelling this dead burning flesh and this horrible scream that this thing was creating. As I knew now, out of fear, this was a skimwalker. I kicked the stick into it, trying to make sure it would stay. The fire wasn't too strong, so I know it probably wasn't going to kill it, but it would definitely keep it at bay, at least long enough for me to get away. I ran to the field that I saw, and I knew it was a place where a couple of people I knew would drive their ATVs and dirt bikes, so I knew it would be a quick way to get out of here. I ran so fast, not looking back, I soon saw the highway and ran to it, 
and that's when, from a distance, I knew that I was safe. I turned around, and I saw these yellow eyes standing in the dark field staring at me. That's when the thing turned around and fled back into the woods before altogether seeing it disappear. It took one more look behind itself at me, then screamed and ran back. To this day, I haven't had any recent encounters since this all happened in the late summer of August of 2018. Anyways, this was my story on the nature trails that I'll never walk again. This is how I met a skimwalker and got away. For anyone out there, be careful what you wish for. Sometimes you might want to see something creepy, but you definitely don't. Stay safe out there, swamp folk, and thank you if you decide to share my story. Hey, swamp folk. Today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. The new year is a great time to focus on what's most important to you. Whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness, HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen so you can spend it on your resolutions with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Plus, quick and easy meals, including 20-minute recipes and low prep and easy cleanup options. These all provide you an even faster route to putting food on the table. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality, and you can save on average over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. There's more money to put toward those other 2022 goals of yours. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order online or in the app. Easily change your delivery day, food preferences, and plan size, or skip a week whenever you need to. So, what are you waiting for? Join me and tons of others in the swamp today. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Swamped16 and use code Swamped16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. I've been using HelloFresh for 2 years now. I really enjoy the service. It really helps me keep up with my meal plans and my workout grind. I think this is something everybody would love. So again, join me and many others in the swamp today with America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Swamped16 and use code Swamped16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. Hey Swamp Dweller, this would be the first story I have ever submitted to any YouTuber, or anyone for that matter. I experience these encounters with a couple of my friends. I usually only go deep into the wilderness or explore with one or two people, or sometimes just myself. Going off the fact that I've lived in remote places my entire life, I have always felt comfortable. I hope to tell more stories and share my encounters with you, but this is probably one of the most recent and scariest I have ever had. I have a ritual that my best friend of six years and I attend every year. His family and I go up to the Northern California mountains this year, Mount Shasta. I don't go with my siblings or anyone out of my own family. They are not the type of people who go out and do stuff like this. My friends and me enjoy this kind of stuff, but this time was like no other. I woke up the day before, remembering the trip of the next day, and I had almost had a heart attack. I was nowhere near prepared and had no time to get ready because it had slipped my mind, so I did what I could. I finally got most of my stuff ready and headed out to my friend's house. We will call him KJ. KJ and I lived right next to each other's houses, almost a neighborhood apart. There was a small set of woods that separated us. We had our paths that we knew like the back of our hands. I made it over to the little nature trail that I always walked to get to his house. I had walked down it and made it over to his house, packed all my stuff into his family's car, and was excited that we were finally going to go again. I love spending time with KJ and his family. I consider them my second family and love them all dearly. We arrived at the campground. It wasn't in the middle of the forest this time, but it was at a recreational and somewhat popular area of a small town. We unpacked and went to explore this tiny but fantastic place and we ended up finding this excellent swimming hole that was a stream of melted snow water from the mountains. It was freezing cold. It was perfect for swimming after long hikes and relaxing, though. It had a rope swing, 
and I got some pretty cool videos and pictures from it. I met some new people, and all in all, it was fun. And I could say this whole trip was fantastic, even the encounter I had with the thing in the woods. Well, we ended up driving almost an hour out to Lake Siskiyou and finding an overgrown trail that hadn't seen a lot of people. It was more of a game trail, if anything. We all were experienced with the forest and nature and didn't mind going out to unexplored places. So we walked down this rocky, sandy path that followed the edge of a stream and was relatively peaceful until we saw it. I'm calling it a thing since I have no idea what it could be. At first, we had started to smell something. It smelled like rotten garbage or roadkill. It was disgusting and made KJ's mom almost puke. It didn't bother me, but it was still a powerful and grotesque smell. But after smelling this for about 30 seconds, we had this awful feeling. I knew what it was, and it was almost like a primal instinct. No one else knew, but I've had my fair share of wildlife encounters. That being bears, bobcats, etc. At first, we may have run into a bobcat or a mountain lion den, which would make sense. So, I hinted that we should go back, not directly telling them that we needed to leave as to not freak them out. I think at the time, they just figured it was too much of a weird experience, so they picked up the hens, and we headed back. Then, however... We started to hear whoops or whooping noises, which sent shivers down my spine. I immediately thought of a Sasquatch hearing the stories and folk tales. I've always been into the supernatural and know a thing or two about such a topic. However, it chilled me to the bone, and I picked up the pace, no longer thinking of KJ or his family. I'm sure they probably wondered why I was walking so fast and looking over my shoulder. And I figure I was looking over my shoulder because I was paranoid. Then... Rocks and pine cones were thrown at us, and all kinds of other small things from the forest floor. So we took it as a warning and got out of there. I remember looking back behind me at some point, and seeing a figure about seven feet tall in the trees. It was reddish in color. It somewhat blended in with the manzanita and pine trees, and I froze. KJ then asked what it was, and his family kept walking, and I showed him. He said he couldn't see it, but he believed what I saw and believed what I saw was probably Sasquatch. Thank you for letting me share this, and if you want, I can always share more stories in the future. My name is Johnny. This story happened on June 29th, 2018 in the northern region of Florida. I was 21 years old, working as a beach photographer that summer with my buddy who had just graduated from college. We both attended the same college in Pennsylvania. Our company put us in a four-bedroom townhouse with about ten other people. It was a Friday, and I had the day off. Everyone else was working that day, so I just sat in the house relaxing. As the day went on, I became more and more anxious because I had not done anything active. Usually, I walked at least ten miles a day on the beach, taking photos of vacationers and... Another day on the beach didn't sound as appealing as taking a break inside with the AC and some quality Netflix. But today, I felt I had been too lazy with my time, so I decided to go for a night walk throughout the neighborhood behind our housing development on this nice little nature trail. It's enjoyable to walk there at night, because it's always tranquil, and there is a lot of lovely foliage, mansions, etc. on this walk. I discovered a bike trail that I did not know existed before, and decided to check it out. It goes into the woods, and I thought, why not? Maybe being in the trees will remind me of home in rural Pennsylvania, and relaxed my mind. Little did I know, uh, it would be the exact opposite. The bike trail runs perpendicular to the road and goes along a narrow field of power lines that cut through the woods. It goes for what I would guess about 15 miles at least. I was walking for 20 minutes, and all I could hear was the sound of nature around me. It was very calming even though the woods always did give me that spooky feeling. It was a nice place to walk, or so I thought. Along my left was the tree line. To my right was the field with a line of telephone poles cutting through the middle of it, and much less thick tree line on the other side, with some swampy marsh areas. It was a full moon that night, so I wasn't in complete darkness and could see pretty much all around me. So, about 10 to 15 minutes into my walk, some clouds came in and covered the moon. It got much darker out of nowhere, 
so I turned on the flashlight on my phone. I heard a strange noise coming from my right across the field. It sounded like a boar or a pig. It let out a long, low grunt. It didn't sound like the normal sounds that I was used to. It sounded like something had caused it distress. I stood there listening for another sound, but there were no more. I kept walking, hoping I wouldn't hear it again, as it did come out of nowhere, and it startled me. Instantly, I got the feeling of something not being right. All the hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I was very unnerved. Like, I felt like I was being watched. I tried to find where I was on Google Maps, but they would not load because the service was very weak. I eventually ran into another path that veered off into the woods, and there luckily was a map on a board beside it. I stared down the course for a few seconds, contemplating whether to take it. It looked like that cliché shortcut that looks super scary but gets you to your destination a bit quicker. This one was dark, and I mean dark. There was a thick canopy above, as this part of the woods, there was only about a foot between the dense trees and the path on both sides. Without the light on my phone, I would not have been able to see a thing in there. I decided to turn and walk along this path, as it was a quicker way home instead of going back and around the way I originally had came. Then, as I was about to head down the said path, I heard footsteps. I stopped and turned my flashlight off to listen. I wanted to make sure I wasn't being paranoid and scaring myself, but I could indeed still hear them. They were coming towards me from the direction I was headed on the main path. I ran over into the trees and hid because I wasn't about to run into some potentially crazy people out here in the woods. As I was hiding in the trees and waiting for them to pass me, I instantly smelled something terrible. I thought maybe I was just so scared that I soiled my pants, but that was not the case. Instead, it smelled like something decomposing. Like the smell of a dead deer carcass baking out in the sun. If you've ever been hunting, you definitely know that smell. The footsteps became increasingly closer. Then they passed me. I counted three people, or should I say silhouettes, and I couldn't make out their faces or even their clothes. They walked in a straight line, their heads staring straight ahead of them, and none of them said a single word. The one in the middle was dragging some sort of bag behind them along the concrete. I waited for about five minutes until I could no longer see them, hear them, or smell that smell anymore. I started walking down the dark path, slowly but surely. I tried walking quickly, but I wanted to stay quiet, as I was pretty freaked out. I was wearing flip-flops and they clicked my heels with every step, so the slower I was, the quieter I was. I walked for about ten minutes, and I started to hear footsteps. Again. I stopped and turned off my flashlight. The footsteps were coming from behind me this time. I ran back into the trees and waited to see if those people were going to come back again. And inevitably, it was. They brought that awful smell back with them and walked past me the same way, dragging the bag behind him. Were these people following me? Why did they happen to turn around and come onto this path as well? I stayed out there in the bushes for about 20 minutes or so, unsure of what to do. I didn't know if I should keep going the way I was going or run back. I hoped they didn't hear me though. As I waited, they came by again. Which is the freaky part. I heard a man's voice say a girl's name this time though. Barbara Ann Wilcox. Or something like that. I waited another five minutes and just started running down the path. I picked up my flip-flops to make sure I didn't make any noise and didn't even turn my flashlight back on. I ran for what honestly seemed like 10 minutes until I eventually had to stop to take a breath. I was still in the complete darkness, and I turned my flashlight back on to ensure I wasn't being followed. I didn't smell that horrible smell, so I turned the flashlight back off to save my phone's battery and not give myself away. I didn't know how much longer I had to keep going, as this path did not look nearly as long on the map. I began to hear sticks breaking in the woods. They didn't sound like footsteps, but somewhat random. One would break to the left, then to the right a few minutes later. Finally, they started to get louder, and eventually I bolted again. I ran, and I ran, and I ran. I was afraid that there would be something chasing me if I ever turned around. The sticks breaking seemed to follow along on both sides, not too far behind me. It was a fight or flight situation, and I fled as fast as I could. After what seemed like running for an hour, I eventually saw lights and came out of the woods next to a sewage plant. I hurried home along the highway, 
No one was home when I returned to the townhouse, as they had all gone to a beach party. So I sat down, got a glass of water, and searched the name I heard on Google. Barbara Ann Wilcox. This is where it gets strange. In a nutshell, Barbara Ann Wilcox and a friend were from Iowa, and they were hiking through Florida in the 1970s. On their trip, they were murdered by a man named Gerard Schaefer. The cherry on top of the cake is that it happened in 1973, and the skeletal remains of the girls were found scattered throughout the area, which is known as Oak Hammock Park, in 1977 by a group of fishermen. Why were three people, if that's what they were, walking through the woods at night in the pitch black saying the name of a girl that died 40 years ago, about seven hours away in a different part of Florida altogether? And what the hell were they dragging behind them? I'm not sure if I want to know the answers. Throughout the rest of my summer, working in Florida, I continued to do my night walks, but I never went on that bike trail again. So, if you're ever alone in the woods, please be careful. You never know who or what you will find, or worse, who might see you. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true nature trail horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more it's promoted and that helps the swamp grow. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please be sure to give this a 5 star rating as it helps me over there a ton. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new episode, as I upload them nearly every single day, in all things natural and supernatural. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, please be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net, or the email you can find in the description down below. I'm always looking for new and exciting stories to share on the show. If you're on the go, but don't have YouTube Premium, but want to download your favorite Swamp Dweller Scary Stories for free, you can do so on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about any other place you find your favorite podcast online. It's absolutely free and always will be. I'd love to know in the comments down below what story was your favorite. I know, I know, it's always incredibly hard to pick one, but I'd have to say that last one might be mine. Who knows what those strange people were doing in the woods chanting that person's name. If you would like to support the swamp outside of hitting that like button, subscribing, and giving us a 5 star rating, please be sure to check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, and more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool swamp threads. Be sure to join me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I'll see you all soon with another creepy episode.